Hey everybody, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane and this is the Java playlist at the Coding Zoo. In today's lesson, we're gonna to continue to cover the stream API. We are gonna go over how I would use a stream to convert a collection or a list into a map. So if you had ever had a list of objects and you needed to be able to access those objects by a particular key very fast, instead of having to loop through the list for ON, if you wanted to access them in a map and get O1, well, what's an easy way to take it from a list to a map using a string? We're gonna cover that in today's lesson. It's pretty neat stuff. I hope that interests you. We're gonna jump right in. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started, I just want to mention if you haven't subscribed yet and you are interested in learning about different programming languages, different ways of programming, hey, click the subscribe button below, click the little bell icon for alerts to, to know when videos come in the future. And at the end of this video, if you like it, click that like button. If you don't, hey, click the dislike button too. Let us know how we can improve. Our goal is to help you learn how to program. So we'd love your feedback, positive or negative. We'd love to have it. So let's jump right in. All right, so I have a class called link to hash map example. In my main method here, I have a place where I'm creating a list of objects called student. So I'm creating a list of students. If you look down here, I have a method, a static method, find student list. Well, it creates an array list and then it adds a bunch of students to it. There's Shane, Nick, Jai, and Ting Wei. And then it returns that list of students. So pretty simple. Let's go ahead and go back up here. Now, so now I have, I'm creating a list of students and this list of students, I wanna turn it into a map. Well, how would I do that using a stream? So let's go ahead and look at that. You can see right here, I'm taking that list, I'm calling stream on it, and I'm not gonna do map or filter or reduce or any of those functions. I'm just gonna call collect. I'm gonna take the stream and then collect those items going through the stream. And as I collect them, I'm going to perform um, the to map method that is on the collector's class. So it's kind of like a, I'd, I would call it like a factory method. All right, so with this to map, I'm basically telling it, passing it two parameters. I am basically saying, hey, what key should I use to put these objects into a map with? Well, the objects are students, and I want their key in this example to be their names. So this defines the Lambda or the method reference to use for setting the key of the object when you put it into the map. All right, well, I also want to tell it, well, put the entire object into the map. Now I could just say, well, maybe I don't want the entire object. You know, maybe I just wanna put the uh, student's uh, phone number in the map, right? Maybe I just wanna do get, phone number. Well, see, I could do that, but I don't want to do that. I want to store the whole object. So I'm going to do function identity. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it also is just basically say, I want to take in the object and I want to return the same object. That's another way of doing it. I actually prefer to do it this way. Why not use the method that's created for it? Okay. All right, so that will basically produce a student map one. And uh, that student map is a map that has a string, the name is a key, and it has the student, student object inside uh, as a value. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and print it out. Let's go ahead and blow that up. So I'm printing out two things. First, I'm printing out the map itself and next, I'm printing out what kind of class is produced by this um, algorithm here. So if you look at what I have over here, you'll see that here is the map being printed out. It's got a name value pairs, there's Ting Wei, and then there's the student object that has Ting Wei defined. If you go across, you'll see there's Shane, and there's the student object inside that has Shane defined, so forth and so forth, you get it. 
So it put all of the items from the list into the map. Of course, my list is still there. It hasn't changed. It's just moving the objects around. All right, now if you look up down here, this is the default it used for the map. It created a hash map. Pretty neat. So what if I wanted to reserve the ordering? Let's say that I wanted to turn this map into a list later, and I wanted to not reserve, but I wanted to preserve the ordering. Um, so would hash map preserve the ordering of insert? It, it wouldn't. So what, what kind of object would preserve the order of the items you put inside of it? Well, one map that will do that is a linked list hash map, a, a linked list map, right? So how would I specify the same algorithm, but I want to specify a linked list instead of using a default? Let's look at the next example. Okay, so this example is very similar to above. Now, there is one thing is I have, now I have these students and I'm doing stream, collect, and again, my collectors to map. So same as before, student get name, right? And I'm doing, again, same as before, function identity, right? And of course you, hopefully you're familiar with lambdas by now, you should be able to see this could also, um, be the same as student uh, get name, right? That's one way of doing it. So I have my identity and student get name, the function identity, which basically says put the whole object. Next, I have this right here. So what does this do? Well, before I can specify how or what kind of hash map to use, I have to specify what to do when there's clashes. What if you have the same student in the list more than once and with the same name? Well, what, what, what will happen? Will it throw an error? Will it error out? So before I can go and, and pass in the type of hash map I want to use, I have to take care of this um, portion of the rules around this algorithm first. So how would I do that? Well, in this case, I'm passing in a Lambda expression. I'm saying, hey, if you have a student A and a student B, just return a new one. So if the names match, Here's what I want you to do. So if the keys match, right? The key is defined here. Here's what I want you to do. Pass in both of those objects and I'll return B. I want you to return the new one. A is the old one, B is the new one. Now I could actually just throw an exception here. I could change this into an algorithm that throws a legal um, argument exception, legal state exception, something to that effect. I could go ahead and do that. Maybe I don't want to allow that to, to happen, right? Or I can just say use the oldest or, I, I mean, the newest, or I can just say use the oldest. I could change that to A. I want to use the first one that's put in, uh, that is encountered, right? So, um, so that is what this is used for. This is to tell you this particular Lambda expression is our parameter uh, for to map is to say, hey, here's what you do when you have key clashes. All right, so let's, let's just go ahead and print that out real quick. Um, if I don't specify a rule here and I have an extra student in there with the same name, let's see what happens. So I have Nick and I have Nick. I have them in there twice. I'm going to go ahead and run this and it should return the first one. A is the old one, the first one you encounter, B is the, new, the latest one. Let's see which one it returns. Let's run it. All right, blow that up. Still got a hash map. I haven't switched it over to a linked list um, map yet. If I look in here, let's find Nick. Which Nick is it? Where's Nick? There is Nick. And Nick's age is 12. His phone number is 123. So if I go to the bottom here, this Nick, the first one, 12, and number starts with 123. The second Nick is 13, number starts with 212. So when he encountered that duplicate key, it used the old one. I could switch it around and return B here, and it would use the latest one. What if you didn't specify this at all? What if I go back to the first example and 
let's say I comment that out and run the first example. What would happen there? Well, at that point you get a legal state exception, you get an error. It won't let you do it. So basically it says duplicate key, knit, right? Now you don't have to, uh, if you want to throw a set an exception when this happens, uh, and you don't want to specify which one to use, you just don't, it shouldn't happen. You want to throw an exception. You could use this exception or you could have uh, this, this expression down here uh, throw a different exception for you, maybe a custom exception. So comment that out. Can't type today as usual. Okay, this is the example we just went over. This is the Lambda expression that takes care of what to do with duplicates. Again, you can throw a custom exception from this Lambda if you wanted to. Now, now let's get to what I was trying to solve in the first place. I wanted to change it to a map that would preserve the ordering of the items that are in the list in the first place. Because later on, I may want to take that map and iterate through it. And when I do, I want to iterate through it in the order I originally had, right? So how can I do that? Well, I could tell um, to map to use a particular type of hash map that would preserve that order that would be a linked hash map. So let's go down to this example. All right, so same as above, but my fourth parameter, I'm basically saying which kind of map I want you to use, right? So the default's a hash map. I'm saying use a new linked hash map. I could say use a concurrent hash map, right? I could say whatever, whichever hash map I need for that particular use case. So let's run this. And if, and if this worked correctly, we should see that it prints out the type as linked um, hash map, I believe. All right, let's blow that up. So there we go. There's the type linked hash map. Now, if you look here, uh, I went ahead and, and, and processed it at, like in the other examples before. Got it to use the... Um, it didn't use the first one like it did in this example. It used the second one. Let's let's make sure. Let's check it out. Let's make sure it's working like it's supposed to be. Where's Nick? Oh, went too far. I am just missing Nick. Let's see if we can go slowly here. There's Shane, there's Nick. Nick is 13. Is it the first one or the second one? There's Nick. 12, that's the first one. And it should be the second one. 13. There we go. So in this case, B returns the newest or the latest one in the list. And if you return A, it returns the first one. So that's a, that's a lot to take in. Um, just remember with this API, you can pass um, these two parameters. You can pass the uh, Lambda expression for how do you get the key out of the object. And you can pass the Lambda expression or function identity um, to say um, what the value should be in the hash map when you use that key, All right? Now, the third parameter, is again, what I do with duplicates. I can throw an error. I can say, return the first one, return the second one, so forth. And the fourth one is, fourth parameter is, hey, I wanna use this kind of hash map. I wanna use this kind of map, rather. I don't wanna use a hash map. I wanna use this kind of map. Uh, and I can specify exactly which one. All right, so that's it. Hope that makes sense. Very, very cool stuff. So hopefully this is helpful. Again, if you, uh, have not subscribed yet and you enjoyed this video and would like to see others, click the subscribe button below and click that bell icon. If you liked the video, click like and tell others about us. Pass this video along, share it. We really appreciate it. Your help is much appreciated. Thanks for joining us and I hope to see you again. I want you to have a great week. Bye.